Hello everyone, today we are going to continue our journey in open economy models with money. The analysis today will be based on the previous lectures. So if you are not familiar with the open economy model without money, then please do have a brief review. Like always, this is the big picture of where you are standing at. We are approaching the end of macroeconomic theory. We are still in the open economy with money but we are going to introduce how to formally analyze some effects of exogenous variables. As we mentioned, this lecture is going to be based on previous models. We have learned how an exchange rate is defined. It is essentially the price of one currency in terms of the other. We also discuss how to invest in the forex market. The key to making a profit is to be able to forecast the trend of the global financial market. If you can foresee the trend beforehand, then you can earn a profit in both bullish and bearish market. This lecture will show you how to forecast the trend using macroeconomic theory. This is part of the fundamental analysis we mentioned in the previous lecture. Here are the learning objectives today. First, we will derive the purchasing power parity or PPP, which is the long-run law in the open economy model with money. Second, we will also introduce the two exchange rate regimes adopted by different countries. Then, we will apply our small open economy model with money to derive the effects of money supply shock, foreign price shock, and interest rate shock. These causal effects will help you to forecast the trends of the global financial market. And finally, please apply this knowledge to the investment practice in the trading game. You still have some time left and try to maximize your profit. To make the discussion easier, let's define some notations first. P stands for the domestic price level. P star is the foreign price level. The nominal exchange rate, denoted by E, is defined as how much unit of domestic currency is needed to buy one unit of foreign currency. A higher nominal exchange rate means foreign currency is more expensive in terms of domestic currency because you need more domestic currencies to buy that one unit of foreign currency. The real exchange rate is defined as E multiplied by P star divided by P, which effectively describes how much units of domestic goods is needed to buy one unit of foreign goods. A higher real exchange rate means foreign goods are more expensive in terms of domestic goods. The real exchange rate is also known as terms of trade if all goods are tradable. Devaluation means the value of domestic currency drops or becomes weaker, which translates into a higher E. Revaluation means the reverse of devaluation. Be careful that here E is the price of the foreign currency. So a higher E means your domestic currency becomes weaker or depreciates. Don't get confused here. Building on the small open economy without money, the only additional assumption assumed in the small open economy with money is purchasing power parity. This assumption is actually an economic law one can derive based on economic principle of equilibrium. Imagine if it is costly to transport goods across countries and there are no trade barriers like quota and tariffs, then the domestic price of the same goods P should be equal to the foreign counterpart E multiplied by P star. In other words, the real exchange rate should be equal to 1 if you divide P over to the right hand side. Now let's see the two possibilities. If P is greater than EP star, then foreign goods are cheaper, leading to an excessive demand for foreign goods, which will push P star higher until market clears. On the other hand, if P is less than EP star, then domestic goods are cheaper, leading to an excessive demand for domestic goods, which will then push P higher until the market clears. 
factor mobility across border in the input market will just reinforce the parity in the output market. This simple relationship P equals to E multiplied by P star is called purchasing power parity or the law of one price. However, the law of one price does not always hold. For example, there are goods that are not tradable due to substantial transport cost. So the price of these two goods in the two countries won't equal. For example, you won't fly to France to have your hair cut, even if you know that the French hairdresser is excellent, because it is simply not worth it to fly from the UK to France. Another reason for the failure of PPP is the heterogeneity of goods in different countries. Think of the wine produced in the Vale of Glamorgan and the wine produced in Bordeaux. We also need to distinguish between two exchange rate regimes in our model, which set the institutional arrangement of the government intervention in the forex market. The first regime is called flexible or floating exchange regime. This regime leaves the exchange rate to be determined by the market force. Countries like the US and the UK adopt this regime. The second regime is called fixed exchange regime. But the degree can differ from hard pack to soft pack depending on the range of allowed fluctuations. The hard pack means a strictly fixed exchange rate with another currency. This can be achieved by dollarization such as in Ecuador which directly use the US dollars as their own currency. So the exchange rate is always one to one. On the other hand, Hong Kong designates a currency board to achieve a strict exchange rate between the US dollar and Hong Kong dollar. Thirdly, it can also be achieved by currency union. So all member countries use the same currency like the European Monetary Union. The soft pack allows for some range of fluctuations of the exchange rate. Historical examples include the European monetary system before the Eurozone was introduced and the Britain Wood system after the Second World War. In the Britain Wood system, the US dollar is fixed with gold and other currencies are fixed with the US dollar. The Britain Wood system gives the US dollar the central role in the financial market but this role is weakening since the 2008 global financial crisis. Other currencies like the Euro and the Chinese Yuan and Japanese Yen are trying to challenge the central role of the US dollar over the years. Now let's look at the equilibrium of the small open economy model with money. After introducing the PPP assumption under the flexible exchange rate regime, Note that all the other conditions like the intra and intertemporal conditions in the RBC model we introduced in the previous semester still hold. It is a combination of the chapter 12 and chapter 15 models. I list all the market clearing conditions here, but you should also have a intra and intertemporal conditions written down as well, if possible. The general equilibrium occurs when the input markets, output market, and money market clear at the same time, as shown in the diagram here. Remember that the exogenous variables include M, the money balance, P star, the price level of the foreign market, uh, Z, productivity, R star, the interest rate of the global financial market, and G, the government expenditure. While the endogenous variables are Y, the output, C, consumption, I the investment, N the employment, P the domestic price level, and E the exchange rate. A special notice here, because E is flexible here in this regime, so E is endogenous, but in other regime it can be fixed and exogenous. Now let's look at the first analysis. What is the effect of monetary policy shock? say, a higher money supply. Don't forget to apply the three-step approach we summarized in lecture 4.2. First, 
you need to distinguish between the exogenous and endogenous variables, which we have already done in the previous slide. Okay, second, distinguish between the shift of the curve and the shift along the curve. A rise in money supply is a shift of the vertical money supply curve from M1 to M2, but a shift along the money demand curve because M is just a horizontal axis variable. To see the effect on the money market, we need to combine the money demand function with the PPP assumption. After some simple algebra, we have M equals to E P star multiplied by the liquidity function L. When M rises on the left hand side, the right hand side has to rise as well to balance the equation. We know that P star is fixed, R star is fixed because they are both exogenous. But the output market is slower than the forex market in adjustment speed. So the exchange rate E will rise first to cancel out the effect of a rise in M. A rise in E means a depreciation of domestic currency. In summary, a rise in domestic money supply will make domestic currency weaker, leaving the real side of the economy unchanged. The intuition is straightforward. Too much domestic currency will make it worth less. Here is an example of how to apply this knowledge to investment practice. If the Federal Reserve in the US announces a QE, which basically means they are going to issue more US dollars, then the US dollar is expected to depreciate. So the pair of Great Britain pounds slash US dollars will go up because you will need more US dollars to buy one unit of Great Britain pounds. Now you can put a long position to this pair before this happens so that you can earn a profit. Equivalently, you can place a short position on the USD slash Japanese yen for the same reason in the opposite direction. Next, let's analyze the effect of a rise in foreign price level P star while keeping all the other exhaustion variables fixed. A rise in P star means a high inflation in the rest of the world. Since other exhaustion variables like M and R star are fixed, and output market is slow to adjust, the exchange rate E will have to absorb this change by a proportionate drop on the right hand side, so that the equation is restored. In summary, a higher inflation in the rest of the world will make the domestic currency stronger. The intuition is straightforward too. A weaker enemy means a stronger yourself. Take this knowledge to the investment practice. If the ONS in the UK announces a higher inflation, then the US dollar will become stronger. Simply treat the UK as the foreign country and the US as the domestic country, then you should short the pair of Great Britain pounds and US dollars. Lastly, let's analyze the effect of a rise in world interest rate R star. Different from previous analysis, a change in interest rate will have a wider effect beyond the money market because R is also relevant to the output market as we analyzed in chapter 15. Recall that a rise in interest rate tends to increase the current account, resulting in a rightward shift of aggregate demand curve. The output level rises from Y1 to Y2. In the money market, a rise in Y and a rise in R have opposite effect on the liquidity function L. But empirical evidence shows that the output effect dominates. So the liquidity function L will have an overall rise. To cancel out this change on the right hand side of the monetary market clearing condition, M equals to E P star multiplied by L. The exchange rate E must decrease. In summary, a rise in world interest rate leads to a stronger domestic currency. For example, if the Federal Reserve raises interest rate, which means a higher world interest rate, because the US is not a small open economy but a large open economy have an influential effect 
on the global financial market. In this case, you would put a long position on the US dollar slash Japanese yen pair because the US dollar will become stronger and you need more Japanese yen to buy US dollars. Alternatively, you can place a short position on Euro slash USD pair for the same reason but in the opposite direction. Today, we have developed the small open economy model with money and apply this model to analyze the three common effects under the flexible exchange rate regime. We will discuss the model and the effects under the fixed exchange rate regime in the next lecture. Have fun!